O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who in the celebration of Easter graciously give to the world the healing of heavenly remedies, show benevolence to your church that our present observance may benefit us for eternal, for eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the following Sabbath... Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All, All the, the ends, ends of the earth, earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All, All the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the saving, saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All, all the, the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the saving, saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. 
Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. Whenever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. So in this uh, 14th chapter of John, we have this, uh, this part of the Last Supper discourses of Jesus um, before, on Holy Thursday before he goes to undergo his passion. And um, we really, uh, in, in this passage in particular, really the last couple days and then uh, going into next week as well, um, this is really a, a beautiful example of Jesus' desire to bring us into the Trinity, right? So here he's speaking of the Father a lot. I mean, the Father is in almost every single sentence or multiple times in the sentence, in the sentences. And then um, next week we'll hear about the coming of the Advocate and of the Holy Spirit. And so there's this desire on the part of Jesus, and, it, and it's mysterious, right? This is something, the mystery of the Trinity is something that we can know and we can understand some things about, but we're never going to know completely because only God understands himself completely as God. And if we understood God completely, we'd be God, and we're obviously not. Um, but what Jesus wants to do is to take us into that mystery. Right? And if we think about just even earthly fatherhood and all earthly fatherhood derives um, what it means to be a father from God the Father himself, Earthly fatherhood generates life, right? The Father is the source, uh, the Heavenly Father is the source of all life. And so even though Jesus and the Holy Spirit always existed, right, they were never created, but still they, they are generated in a sense, generated from all eternity. What does that look like? What does that mean? I don't know. We'll find out when we get to heaven. Um, but they are generated from the Father. And we also see this in another, another passage in the gospel where Jesus is asked by the rich young man, he says, good teacher, what must I do to attain eternal life? And uh, Jesus kind of turns it around and he says, well, why do you call me good? There's only one who is good, God alone. And that's interesting because Jesus isn't saying he's not good. Obviously, Jesus is also God, so he's perfectly good. What he's saying is all the goodness that he has, everything good that is in the Son comes from the Father. And so there's this desire on Jesus' part to make the Father known to his disciples, right? that we would understand the love that is between the Father and the Son in the Holy Spirit, and that we would be drawn into that. We see that desire of Jesus from uh, yesterday's reading. Again, these are uh, right back to back uh, for, from each other. Um, and we see that where Jesus says that he is going Excuse me, he says, uh, I will come, I, as I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. And Thomas asks him, we don't know where you're going, how are we going to know the way? And then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the place where Jesus is going, he's going to undergo his passion. The reason he's undergoing his passion is to then open up eternal life to you and to me so that we can go back to the source of true life, which is the Father. Right? That is where we find true goodness, true beauty, true joy. Um, right? The true fulfillment of all of our hopes and our desires is in the heart of the Father. But the only way to get there is through Jesus. And that's why Jesus can say in our passage today, the Father is in me, I am in the Father. Um, he asks Philip kind of, you know, almost with, uh, you, know, you know, almost in a chagrin way, I've been with you so long and do you still not recognize me? Right, that he and the Father are so united that to see Jesus is to see the Father. And that that's the whole mission of the Son, is to reveal who the Father is and then to draw us back into the Father who is the source of all life and all goodness. So I know that's a lot to kind of you know, uh, think about and weigh in, but I'd say just a simple grace to ask for today is ask Jesus for the grace right, that, we would be, that we would recognize in him the Father and that we would allow our hearts to be drawn into deeper, deeper love with the Father, in the Son, and in the grace of the Holy Spirit.
Trusting in our Heavenly Father, who is the source of all goodness, we present him now our prayers and our needs. For the Pope and all who serve the people of God, may the Lord help them to per persevere in defending the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the God of justice help them in their work of serving their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for the sake of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that we who worship at God's altar may be transformed for service in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, for lives lost to the coronavirus, for all Holy Family parishioners who died on this date, including Evelyn Doobie, Jane McColgan, Margaret Zelly Schmidt, and Nana Macaroni. May they be clothed in eternal glory and see God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Helen Joseph, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are generous, merciful, and just, and we ask you to please hear and answer these prayers, and all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, for they are all made to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever, and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, Carl, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father, I wish that where I am, those you gave me may also be with me, that they may see the glory that you gave me. Alleluia. Alleluia. With gathered hearts, let us now pray our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. <clears throat> I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael, the, the archangel, archangel, defend us in battle. battle. Be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, thou O Prince, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray, Pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. St. Joseph. Pray for us. Hello, everyone. If you're having a good morning so far, well, of course you're having a good morning. You just had Mass with me, so if we get, it can't be going much better, right? <laughs> um, I am going to... I want to know is, how did he get a haircut? That's right. Yeah. That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah, so someone, someone is asking how I got a haircut and uh, wondering if I went out and maybe uh, part, gotten a, a, had a business open up specially for... No, this, uh, this was all me, so... And whether it's good or bad, this was I, I, I did this myself, so it's pretty pretty easy to take care of. Um, I am this <laughs> I, I, <laughs> right. I, I am going to ask one of my assistants. So I did forget my phone again, oh, <laughs> so oh. it's uh, I think it's in my. Or if you want to read right off the live stream, if there. No, no, no. That's it's my fault. So I'm sorry. I forgot my phone. Like I'm usually pretty good about it, but I just it's back in the sacristy. So. No, no, that's okay. Actually, actually, this is perfect while we're waiting to kind of pull up the live stream so uh, my assistant can feed us the questions. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, one thing I did want to start out with is uh, if, if we could actually just start out with a couple prayers. Um, so one of my, um, the diocese posted this and I did too. So one of my classmates, Father Ryan Riley, uh, he's the associate pastor at St. John's in Fenton. So they're just, you know, maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes down the road from us. Um, he actually went into the ICU uh, yesterday with uh, COVID-related symptoms and things. So um, if we could just say, if you could keep him in your prayers, and we'll start out by maybe saying uh, maybe just a, our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory be um, would be great. Uh, and uh, But then if you could also keep him and just all the doctors and nurses in your prayers as well. Um, he's... Uh, He's down at U of M uh, right now, so if you could uh, keep him in your prayers, that'd be great. But uh, let's just pray. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And dear Jesus, we just ask that you pour out your blessing upon Father Ryan. Uh, just be uh, very near him, and uh, let him know the comfort of your presence. We ask that you grant him complete and total healing um, from this illness, and that you'd be with all the doctors and nurses and all those who are providing care for him. Um, we ask especially that you would be with all the people of uh, St. John's and Fenton, that you would uh, bless them and be with them as well. And we ask all of this in your most holy name. Amen. Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, great. I figured that was a good way to start out. I would also get in trouble, because again, we were in seminary for six years together, so I, I kind of own my prayers. So, um, but yeah, please keep, uh, please keep Father Ryan in your prayers. He's, a, he's, a, uh, he's quite the personality. He's a, he's a good man and a great priest, so we're really blessed to have him in this diocese. So, um, I don't, yeah. And uh, Peter, since the bishops are okay, ten people from there, what do you want us to say? 
what, what do I honestly? Th- oh, what, what do I honestly think? Um, well, I. Or, it says, "What do you honestly think?" What do I? Oh, what do I honestly think about? So, okay, the question was: so the bishop, and many of you probably saw this, uh, bishop um, released a statement about uh, public masses. If we were planning on starting up May 18th, and then the stay-at-home ex- order got extended again uh, through the end of May, and so. Uh, the bishop was explaining that in a statement, but then also said that, uh, I'm remembering exactly that, um, the, that, that during masses, more, up to 10 people would be allowed. Um, so that's something we weren't expecting here to, uh, at, uh, to hear um, here at the parish. So we were planning for a couple of different contingencies, and that, that wasn't one of them. Um, I think we were thinking it would either kind of be all or nothing, like we'd go back to having a larger group or, or none at all at all. So um, right now, we're figuring it out. So we, uh, yeah, we don't, uh, we don't quite have a plan in place. I was uh, discussing with Father Joe, and I think what he mentioned is that he was going to address it tomorrow at his, um, at the live stream mass. Oh, either, okay, so possi- possibly either tonight or tomorrow. So um, if, if it's not tonight, then uh, tomorrow at the live stream mass. Uh, so, so we'll see. I would just say stay tuned, and uh, we'll kind of, um, yeah, so a little bit surprising, I guess, because uh, we, I think we were expecting either kind of more one way or the other, either none at all or, um, or being opened up more. So, uh, yeah, that'll be addressed again either tonight or tomorrow. So stay tuned to uh, the parish Facebook page and the parish website. So, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we'll probably, I would, well, I was imagining that too because we had a number. That, I remember that was kind of a kind of a big announcement, so I figured we'd get some questions that way. Well, um, well, good. Well, if that's uh, if that's all we've got for today, it could be. A, yeah, yes. Tomorrow we're. Oh yes, uh, good good reminder. Uh, yeah, tomorrow again we're going to be doing our normal uh, Eucharistic adoration processions. Um, four neighborhoods again, right? Two for each of us. Well, actually, Father Joe has a very long one, and you have three short ones. Oh, okay. So okay. Oh, okay, so we're going to be going to neighborhoods off of Cook Road, all, all of them, and so apparently Father Joe has a very, very long route, and I've got, uh, I've got shorter ones, but I've got three of them, so you figure out, and fig- you, you, everyone, you figure out if that's right and just, or if one of us is getting gypped here, so <laughs> no, uh, no, so that'll, that'll be great, um, and so yeah, if you live in those neighborhoods, or if you, you go ahead and, well, yeah, we have the routes online uh, on the parish, parish Facebook page, so you can, yep, you can go uh, look at the routes and drive over there. We've had people do that from week to week. Even if you don't live in those neighborhoods, you can certainly drive over. Um, and I think we've got a marker on there that shows the starting and finishing. Is that correct? Um, yes. It, okay. We so start you, at the, I hope I don't say this backwards. We start at the white dot and end at the black dot. Okay. Start at the white dot and end at the black dot. Uh, Okay, and we had to reverse one. But if you're, if you kind of see on the route where it is, you'll catch us at at some point. So usually around eleven ish is, is when we begin. Um, so yeah, if you're in in one of those neighborhoods, please uh, make a point of stopping by. We'd love to see and give you a blessing. Um, so. And I'm thinking that the main live stream mass continues during the week. Yes. Uh, the question was was will live stream mass continue during the week? Yep. Um, my understanding is that as long as we're in the situation that we're in, uh, we're going to continue live streaming uh, a daily Mass. and oh, and Even beyond that, uh, well, the Sunday Mass we were doing even beforehand, but we're... Yeah, but I think our goal is, it was always, the end goal, the reason we started live streaming before the Sunday Sunday Mass is because our goal was to live stream to stay open this weekend. Oh, even on the daily Masses. Oh, okay. That's that's what I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we because we, um, if you recall, for we were actually live streaming our Sunday mass. Uh, one of us our Sunday masses before all this happened, and so um, yeah, if you know, even when things get back to normal, whatever, that, whenever that happens, whatever that looks like, um, that that would certainly still continue. And then live streaming daily masses that'll be that'll be figured out. But certainly we could count on Sundays. But until we're, um, I'd say until we're back to somewhat normal, yeah, we'll continue live streaming daily mass and uh, Sunday mass. So. Oh, did uh, did our blessed mother? The question was, did our blessed mother? Did she have another sister also named Mary? Um, according uh, according to a tradition, uh, the church's belief that Mary was um, just a, she was an only child from uh, her from the parents uh, uh, Joachim and uh, Saints Joachim and Saint Anne. 
um, that, uh, yeah, and so she was, she was an only child, and then, um, yeah, and I, I would, well, I guess some parents have done that. I don't know why you'd name two of your kids Mary. That seems like it'd just be very confusing when you wanted to get one of their attentions. But, um, but actually, that's, a, that's actually a little good uh, uh, jump-off point, because in the Gospels, right, we do hear, um, uh, we do hear where they talk about, you know, Jesus' brothers and sisters, right? They'll say, well, not, our, not his brothers, you know, James and and Simon with us, and, and don't we know them? Um, and, and that's just uh, important for us to know because we do believe that Mary did not have any other did not have any other children, right? So the only child she had was Jesus, um, and that she was o- always uh, she was immaculate conceived, and she was always uh, we believe <coughs> excuse me her perpetual virginity. So uh, when she uh, conceived our Lord, and then even after so that she didn't have any other children. Um, so that's a, a doctrine of the of the Catholic Church that we believe, and so yeah, it's like, well, then what do we do about all these you know brothers and sisters that are talked about? So there are a couple of things. Um, uh, some of them uh, could be other other relatives, um, other you know cousins or second cousins, uh, things like that. Um, or the other, um, we don't know this for sure. One of the other um, uh, things that's been put out there as a possible theory is that Joseph may have been a widower; that he may have been. He may have been married previously, and his uh, wife may have died, and so he may have had children from a, you know a previous uh, spouse that had passed away. We don't know that um, for for certain, uh, but either way, they would be different um, different relatives or different uh, relations that uh, that Jesus um, would have had, or people that were close. And even in Middle Eastern culture, um, that's very true. Like they'll just. Uh, Oftentimes in that culture, you'll refer to your cousins as, you know, your brothers and sisters, right? That's just how they refer. So it, it makes sense. For us, we think, oh, if you're saying brother or sister, you're like blood relative or sister. And um, for us, that makes sense. But in, in the uh, Near East, Middle East culture, they, if, if you're part of the family, then you're, you're my brother, you're my sister. So that's kind of more how, they, um, how we understand that, that when it refers to brothers and sisters of Jesus, it's, it could be relatives, right? Cousins or things like that, so. Oh, who are the three Marys at the cross? Um, there was, uh, boy, I feel like I'm on a trivia right now, but there was certainly uh, our Blessed Mother, um, and then there was uh, Mary. Um, well, there's, there, there's, a little, there's a little debate about this. Uh, in, in, the, in John's Gospel, when he speaks about that, um, the way he speaks about those who are standing at the cross, it could actually be three or four. Because I think there's uh, Mary, um, is it Mary the the wife of uh, the mother of Salome or Clopas, uh, some, Mary of Clopas, something like that. Um, and then there is another Mary, um, and we're not sure if it's Mary or it was Mary the mother of Clopas. It's it's something like that where it says Mary and then the mother of. So we don't know if it's Mary who is the mother of Clopas or Salome, whoever that was. Or if it's Mary, that's one person, the mother of Jesus, and then someone else who is the mother of Clopas. So it's it's not really, uh, there were a couple, definitely a couple of Marys, and that is one that we're not sure. I looked at uh, kind of the textual footnote in the Bible one time to, to think about that, and I, I just always assumed that um, it was three, but it said, you know, and I'm not an expert on Greek, but the, the scholars that, <laughs> that uh, do the translations are, and they say the way the Greek's written, it could have been, it said it's uncertain if it's three or four women that are meant, so... Uh, they didn't have, in Greek, they didn't have punctuation and uh, uh, commas like we do. So we add them into the, in, into the Bible. So we're not really sure. That's a great question. But um, yeah, I think there's a, one, the ones that went to annoy, I think so would be Mary, the mother of Jesus. There's Mary, the mother of Salome. And then I think there's like a Mary, the wife of Clopas. And then um, someone, there could have been someone else too. Uh, but I'm doing that off the top of my head. I have to look at the, the scripture passage again. Great question, though. Hmm. Probably not, right? The question was, if it rains on Sunday, will we still be doing Eucharistic procession? And um, uh, no, I mean, that's kind of been our, it's, this has all been weather permitting. And actually, we've been very, very blessed. So please, please pray. Uh, all of our processions have been weather permitting and we've had good weather. We haven't had to, can- yeah, we haven't had to cancel we a single had, one. We've had the threat of rain several times. Yeah, we've had the threat of rain, but we haven't, every time that we've scheduled them, we've, we've, had, we've had it. So we haven't had to cancel one. So hopefully... We don't have to cancel it this week, um, 
But yeah, we just, because obviously we're carrying the Eucharist outside and we don't want the rain. Yeah, we got to <laughs> protect our Lord, so we don't want that. Um, yeah, so we, we would cancel. But again, we would let you know on the uh, Facebook page. We'll let, we'll let people know if, if it's not going to happen. But uh, yeah, pray for good weather and um, hopefully we won't have to cancel because we haven't had to so far. We've been able to do it every week so far. So um, yeah. All right, those are our, our uh, last, uh, last questions. So thanks so much. It was great being with you uh, here this morning. And God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.